When I was 18, I moved into an old Sprinter van. But it wasn't always like this. For a long time, I was delivering pizzas out of my old car, and days started to feel like they were repeating themselves. I mean, shoot. I guess you could say it. Feels like we living in a loop. The cops find black people to kill and shoot. The media just pick which one to give to you. You can't stomach it for a week, and then you poop. At some points, I began to feel a bit frustrated with my situation. I had a feeling of being trapped in my hometown for my whole life so far. And the thing is, I knew what was out there, but I wasn't quite able to reach it yet. So for that time, I spent my days delivering pizzas to tightwads who didn't tip and hanging out in friends' basements. Used to need six brews to get moving. Now I do some yoga, pleasure my women and get to it. Ah, the audacity of adulthood. They gon' want you stuck where you at. In my junior year of high school, COVID-19 had hit, sending the whole world into shock. Everyone was stuck in their homes, and this gave me the chance to start a project I had always wanted to. Back in 2020, the world faced a great pandemic, and the metropolis of Manila was under a strict quarantine. People were not allowed to roam about and were strictly confined to their houses. If you ran out of food, you had to grow your own. The streets were empty. It was a ghostly period of history. Humanity is glad that period of time has passed. Good morning from the Redwoods. So after COVID, what all happened? So, I was working on the van for like nine months and eventually my friends and I all took my first road trip. It was something really to remember. It, it just went wrong in a million ways. <laughs> it all ended up working out and that was like my first taste of van life. Also, a lot of people don't know this, but I went to college for a year. So I ended up out west and that's really what was like the pipeline to me dropping out and becoming this full-time traveler. I started posting little like TikToks here and there. Okay. Eventually I realized that you could get paid from freaking posting TikToks. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I'm, I'm dropping out of college. I'm, I'm hitting the road because I realized it was a real opportunity and something that I could actually achieve. Um, so I set off in May of 2021 or 2022, May 2022. And now it's, May 2023, so it's kind of crazy. What did your parents think? Oh my gosh. My parents thought I was crazy thinking I was going to drop out of college and create a career out of posting videos on social media, especially my dad being an old head. He <laughs> did not understand social media. He was definitely thinking that college was a good option. You have to have the, the commitment. Like me and you were talking about that the other day. Um, like the number one thing of this life is being committed. Like me and you, we don't have responsibilities other than creating videos and finding out how to keep this life going. I mean, we created a life that this would be possible, Yeah. you know? This is a journal entry of mine from January, 2022. At times in life, you find yourself face to face with a decision only you can make. The type of decision that can either put you three steps closer to your goals and aspirations or leave you stuck in what was. I ask myself what's holding me back after talking about it for so long. All I can think of is fear. And so I say I'm jumping into this head first with plans to grow wings as I fall. Figured I might as well show you guys what I've been living in for the past year. Come on in. So I built this thing for $16,000 total. I bought the car for $9,000 on Facebook Marketplace and I spent seven on the build, so I'm gonna show you guys. I built a six foot bed platform and underneath it I have six feet of storage over here and here's my battery system. Over here I've got a sink that is fully functioning. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I've got my pantry, my water tanks, um, pretty simple stuff and I'm gonna show you guys what I cook on I just cook on old reliable anytime the back of my van is clean 
This is a little bit of what the front may look like. Living in a small vehicle means that you don't have storage for everything you have in a house, but um, that's the thing you have to give up to live in places like this. I mean, can't be beat. Can't be beat. I finished up my van and I ended up road tripping it out west to try out college. I actually studied forestry, but that didn't work out and I was completely confused in life. I didn't know, I didn't have any direction. And so I finally decided to pull the trigger and hit the road, really. At college, I would meet two of my best friends and we would eventually leave to hit the road together. In the days leading up to me leaving for good, I was in a state of negative thoughts and feelings all the time, watching people on the internet doing what I wanted to be doing. I was fed up with the school system I had just gotten broken up with. I was going to the gym two times a day simply to pass the time. I would look forward to going to bed at every single night. But part of me thinks that you can't experience such extreme highs without going through extreme lows. I mean, we wouldn't be able to appreciate everything that we think is great if we didn't go through something to contrast that. It's like you can't have the yin without the yang, or you can't have a rainbow without the rain. At the end of my first year of college, I knew something had to change. Alright y'all, today's the day for dropping out of college, hitting the road forever, hopefully. I mean, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. I, I can't even believe it. I've been looking forward to this for months and I'm finally doing it. It honestly feels completely surreal, but I don't think I've ever been excited for something like this in my whole entire life. I hit the road and with months feeling like days, time flew by. I learned so many things about myself and what I value as far as the human experience goes in life. I've realized that the root of happiness in my life comes from human connection and bonding with new friends around the world. When I started traveling, I was chasing crazy views and the highest mountaintops. I always thought that the beauty of an area had a direct correlation with the quality of your time there. But after some time to grow and develop as a person, I've realized that the views are only just a bonus. The beauty of travel comes from the people you meet, the new things you experience, and the simple act of exploration. And this is a lesson I'll hold dear to my heart as it only motivates me to see more of this world. Everyone has such different stories to tell and things to teach you, and I feel like there's always a lesson to be learned from each new person. Growing up in your small hometown, you see the same people, do the same things, you eat the same food, and you work the same job. I think that the environment you surround yourself in has an extreme effect on the capacity at which you can grow to. Leaving opened up the doors to opportunities I never thought would have even existed. The story of who you were yesterday has nothing to do with who you are right now. So don't let the past get in between you and who you are in this moment, here and now. What I've really realized this year is that the people that are like close to you, like all of my best friends and family, are like everything you have. You know? uh, it's crazy that it is. They're like your whole life. When I left my hometown, I knew absolutely nobody on that entire side of the country. I guess you could say I took a leap of faith, even though I had a lot of doubts. Oh. Luckily for me, I found my people quick, and when you make friends based on common interests rather than where you grew up at, you're able to create a deep sense of connection. When you really think about it, there's a world full of seven billion people, so you have to explore new phases to find those you associate with. Dirty as hell, bro. Bro, just...
I'm gonna tell y'all something. Sometimes, sometimes you just do things for the sake of it. Why? For the sake of it. I don't know why. Speaking of doing things for the sake of it. Hey, bro. We just I'm had a bad hose. <laughs> oh. We're basically using this here hose and those there rollerblades to roll through the redwoods. This could either be the best idea we ever had or it could be a very big oopsie. Oopsie! All right, everybody. Game plan! We got us, us. in the van. Uh -huh. Here, hose. So we got our hose and we got our van, boys. Who's driving? Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, all right. We got like instantly the cat. <laughs> <We got it. laughs> this here, wild <laughs> Mike. <laughs> These are the days of our lives, and I believe you should act childishly as long as you possibly can. So if that means getting an extension cord and an old pair of skates from Goodwill to make for an awesome combo, do it. Life is shorter than you know, and there's no promise in tomorrow. So make sure you live life for today. That about wraps it up. I spent the last year with the only thing certain in my life being uncertainty. And I've realized that's the way I like it. I wake up each day with no idea who I'll meet, the new places I'll go, or the things I'll do. Nobody has life completely figured out, so we might as well live a little along the way. Cheers, everybody, and I appreciate you for watching. Oh, I'm just